Well, good evening and thank you for coming to the Upward Basketball League training. And before I even introduce myself, I want to ask you a question. How many of you have ever played sports and were sitting on the bench thinking, I wish my coach would play me, I wish my coach would play me. If I could just play more, I'd get better, I'd, have, I'd develop more, I'd be a better player, and then, I, and then he'd want to play me more. Well, Upward Basketball is set up to be a developmental basketball league. It's to teach, game, teach kids the game and give them the opportunity to play. But it's more than just that. It's a ministry. It's a way to bring kids into a church because it was even developed by a, uh, a minister in South Carolina to tell kids about Jesus Christ in a way that they would never ever see it because they wouldn't come to a church. But if they're going to come play basketball or cheerlead or, or play football or soccer, they would, they would come, but they wouldn't come for any other way. The guy's name's Kaz McCaslin, and we're actually going to watch a video uh, of him with a little bit more of what his heart is for upward sports. So let me play this video, and then we'll... There we go. So here we go. Kaz McCaslin. You can see the passion in, in Mr. McCaslin. He even said it. He wants the upward program goal is to have four million kids reached through sports. That's that's a big goal, and that's why you're here. You're here to learn about the the league and how to do that at your at your location at your church. I didn't introduce myself earlier. My name's Josh Miller, and I was a league director for a basketball and cheerleading league at, in Irving, Texas at Plymouth Park Baptist Church. I brought that league to them. Uh, I was there for seven years and we had 200 to 250 kids every year learning about basketball and, doing, and, and learning about cheerleading. I was not a cheerleading coach, but they were doing a wonderful job with that. And they were also learning about Jesus. And I was there seven years. They, I passed that on to somebody else and they've been doing it for 15 years at this church. And we've learned some things, and Upward's learned some things, and we want to put those, uh, those tools in your hands. So if you want to do upward, an Upward sports program, here's how, how you do it. You start by planning. It doesn't just happen overnight. You have to, uh, you have to start planning. You have to start planning a, a long time before, six months in advance. So what you do is you, the first thing you do is you, you get your... Uh, uh, calendars out. You can get your phones. Everybody has a calendar on their phone, but I'm going to use this calendar here. Uh, you you find figure out your last game day. Your last game day, and in, on, on this calendar, which is for 2020, the last game day would would for January and February would be February 29th, and you would count about eight 
back eight weeks because seasons are typically eight weeks. So you count back eight weeks. One, two, three, if to, to eight there, the first game would be January 11th. And then you'd have three weeks of non-game practice weeks. So you'd end up having 11 full practices. And so you start from there, and then you that's some of the things you need to do six months in, in advance. And you start from there, you start getting your senior leadership, the people that recruit people and, and, to, and to be praying for it and, and helping you with the, the overview stuff. And, and then three months, you start weekly meetings and you start praying with these people and you start doing small uh, tasks every week because if you do small things every week, it's not anything overwhelming. And guess what? It's not a one-person thing. You get a, a team, and you find out what they do best, and then you let them do that. And many hands make light work, and so you just try to find people that do things well and help them and ask them to do that. That means you got to get volunteers, right? Because nobody's getting paid. This is a ministry. you gotta make, You got to find volunteers. Well, how do you do that? Now, we've all asked people to do things for us in the past, and we've done it a variety of ways. Send out a mass email. Hey, I need help with Upward. You're not going to get anybody, to, you know, one or two people. Oh, I love Upward. I want to come back and help. And then sometimes you text somebody and you might get a response. You might not. You get a phone call and get them on the, on the phone. Yeah, yeah, I'll call you back. I'll think about it and call you back. But if you talk to somebody face-to-face, -face, and that's what you got to do, is it's got to be a face-to-face -face interaction. And you have this conversation with this person. And you go to your friend and say, hey, Brian, I need your help. I have a team, of, a, a this basketball team, <coughs> excuse me, that needs help. They need a coach. None of the dads have stepped up, and, and they need a coach. And they're not going to be able to play if you don't help. And you don't want to guilt them, but you also want to make sure that, that you don't let them off the hook either. Because when you're going face-to-face, -face, it's hard for people to say no. Before... COVID, you'd go and shake their hand and you might even hold their hand while you're talking to them. <laughs> but it kind of give them a little uh, incentive to, to say yes. But you can't do that now. Anyway, you, you have a conversation face to face and, and ask them and put a face to the request. Well, now you've got your volunteers and your coaches and all that and they're, they're ready to go, but they don't have teams yet. You've got to get participants. How do you get people to come be a part of this? Well, you got to market and have advertising. Well, the good thing is Upward has already done that for you. They, they've done this plenty of times. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. So they provide, they'll provide you brochures. And all you have to do is put your information, give them your information. They'll even print them and ship them to you. And so you would take these brochures and, and get them to the, into the hands of your church members and, and people in your kids' ministry. And then you can go to places like the independent school district and ask them and see if there's a way for you to get one brochure in the hand of each kid. In Irving, where we were at, we talked to the ISD and they allowed us to get a brochure in every child's hand. That was 18 uh, elementary school uh, and, and something like 25,000 uh, kids got, got a brochure in their hand. And that was amazing. There are times you have to find out what their regulations are and abide by that, but most of the time they'll let you do that. The other thing is this is going to be happening around Halloween, right? It's going to be uh, time for fall festivals at your churches, and, and, and trick-or-treaters are coming to your house. You can put the, have people put them in the brochures and bags as you're going. But the best way to do that, the best way to advertise and market is one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Hey, my son Jay is playing basketball. It's awesome. He's going to have a good time. He wants his friend Grant to play. Grant, do you want to play? Yes. Ask your dad. And then we, that's how you get people. Because friends like to play basketball or play sports with their friends. They like to cheerlead with their friends. So now you have teams. And that's great. Well, how do, or, you have participants. Now you need teams. How do you do that? Well, again, you don't have to reinvent this wheel because Upward has given you a web-based management system called League Manager. You take the, the kids and the, and the names and you put them in, in the League Manager and it helps flow out teams. It also has practice schedulers and game schedulers. So 
Again, you don't have to do all this and figure out how to way to do it. They've done all this stuff for you. And then you come to evaluations. Because here's the thing. You want to have good competitive games. To have good competitive games, you have to have good competitive teams. And to know that, to have good competitive teams, you've got to have an idea of how these players are. If they're good or if they need improvement or however you want to say that. So what you do is you, you get volunteers and you have evaluations for these kids. And you need to do it at least two weeks prior to the first practice so that you can have a, a chance to get that information in. What you do is you take, it, take them into the gym and you have a volunteer with each kid. And you have agility drills. And you set up cones at, at the edges of the, of the lane right here, right? One on each end. And you'll do a basketball, you have a basketball, you'll right hand dribble around it. How many times can you go around that in 30 seconds? And everything's done on 30 second intervals. How many times can you go around in 30 full um, rotations every 30 seconds? And then you do left hand dribble. And then you do a, a side to side slide just to see how they are on their feet if they're, if they're coordinated. And then you have three different shooting places. You have uh, on right side in the middle and on the left. And you have how many times they make it. Not how many times they shoot, how many times they make it. And you put all that information on the clipboard that the, uh, the volunteer has, and you take that and you put it with the, uh, the kid, and you, and you put it in the league manager, and it flows out all this information, and, it's, and, it, and it allows for even teams. Uh, you want to make sure that you offer these times for the evaluations, during the week, on weeknights, so that everybody can have Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the whole week on the even, in the evenings, so, <coughs> excuse me, so that everybody has a chance to be there and have a chance to evaluate. And they go, oh, I, was, I already had practice for this other thing, and I, I never got there. I would have played, but I couldn't. So here's the thing. We, just to sum up how we, what we've talked about today, and this could be a much longer more uh, extensive training, and that's fine, but we want to go over the things that we've, got, we've covered today. The first thing is upwards vision. To create a quality basketball product for the kids in order to give them the information about Jesus, to let them make their decision about Jesus. Because you don't want the, the, uh, a bad basketball league to distract from the message. We also told you how to approach volunteers. It's a face-to-face -face interaction. Don't send out a text and, or, or an email thinking you're going to get a bunch of people. You want to make sure that you make a face-to-face -face interaction. Then you have the marketing and advertising. How do you get your information into the hands of the uh, people that, that need it? Through the ISD, through your church, through the brochures that, that uh, Upward provides. But the best is a, a word-of-mouth, friend-of-friend invitation you can, uh, we went over the league manager and all the uh, things that they have. One of the things I didn't say was that there's also support from Upward. If you have any questions about it, just dial them up. They'll, they'll help you through that. And the last thing is evaluations. How to create even teams is to find out what type of players you have. And, that's, and we went over that. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of it. This is a wonderful program that will benefit you. It will benefit your kids. It will benefit your church. Thank you for being here. Have a good evening.